know why he's the only comic who asked not to be filmed. <laughs> uh, and Travis, uh, you're right. Not sure how you know, I, I do have a pretty small penis. But it's okay, I'm an optimist. When I put on a condom, it's half full, not half empty. <laughs> Uh, your next comedian of the night has been, uh, has been a member of the 955 Club longer than I have. And uh, he's actually a very good friend and he drove, uh, drove quite a ways to get here, which is pretty cool. So put your hands together for the creepiest man in comedy, Johnny Cook. Hey, Greg Schmidt is right. I hate white beater t-shirts. Wife beater pool cues, much more effective. <laughs> all right, we all getting carried away with this World Cup fever, yeah! Yeah, thank God I have ESPN 12, huh? Between that and the WNBA, I'm just betting all the time. USA, USA, yeah, we're gonna take those Slovenians down a step or two, aren't we? if you don't care. You know, in much of the world they call soccer football. It's true. How would you like to be in Europe? You pay big money for football tickets, show up and they're playing soccer. <laughs> Nor do they have all those riots. All right, I haven't been getting out as much as I used to. Some of you probably noticed I've packed on about 30 pounds the last year. However, my doctor said he thought I had the body of a 25-year-old. So I had to bury him right next to it. <laughs> Actually, Josh was uh, talking about those male enhancement commercials. Uh, I'm in that demographic, I'm afraid. You ever see the one that uh, says, uh, now, before you use this, make sure you ask your doctor if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. So I asked my doctor, he said, sure. You're just too ugly. <laughs> Actually, I went to my doctor, this is true. He said uh, one way to stick to a diet and not get sick of it is uh, pick your favorite sport and then train for it like you're a pro. And it'll help you keep your interests up and uh, make you better at something you like. And that's uh, very logical, and it's worked out perfectly. Of course, my favorite sport is sumo wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> one diet I'm never going to try is that Subway diet, the one with that jerk Jared. They still run those. <laughs> Got to admit, though, my uncle in New York, he combined Subway and alcoholism, lost 75 pounds. Passed out in the tracks and the train severed his legs. <laughs> you may have noticed I went to the barber last week, got butchered. True story. I first paid haircut in two years. I walked in the house, forgot I'd done it, walked in the house. My wife burst into laughter. Now she's buried next to the doctor. <laughs> True story though, I'm from out in Lunenburg County. Yeah, best part about that, the old country barber, it's just like Floyd and Mayberry. Funny story. You know how you're in the old uh, barber shop, he's talking to you, he puts you in the old chair, he puts that old smock over you, and he starts cutting your hair. You know how when they put that smock over you, you just can't resist masturbating? <laughs> well, I can't go back there. <laughs> Alright, so I have a commercial for a new kitty litter. Said this uh, promised better clumping and it will help save the planet. Yeah, so if I, uh, if I stick with my old litter, I guess we're gonna spin out of orbit and plunge into the sun. Damn you, Fluffy, I knew we should have got goldfish. Tickled me when I saw the commercial. Actually, my wife's mad at the cat. The curtains got sprayed again. Now she wants to neuter the cat. I think that's a waste of money. Because I did it. <laughs> and she neutered me years ago. 
Actually, my wife prefers our dog, our big famous hero dog. You might have read about him. He's this uh, retired police canine dog. They used his tracking skills to uh, put three drug lords in prison. And some liberal lawyer noticed that all three of them worked at the bacon factory. <laughs> You see, he's just a bad dog. All right. What's the, hey, do necrophiliacs think gay necrophiliacs are kind of gross? <laughs> What's in the news? Kid in Portland disappeared at the science fair last week. Don't worry, he's obviously gotten caught in a time machine. Encyclopedia Brown's going to take care of this any day. They say President Obama is not going to have to go to Illinois to testify in the Blagojevich trial. You been following that? Blagojevich, Illinois. Any of this ring a bell? Yeah, I used to live in Illinois. I don't want to say politics in Illinois is sleazy. Only place I've ever been in a voting booth that had a glory hole. <laughs> Uh, war in Afghanistan not going so great. So they're changing tactics again. Instead of trying to track down the Taliban and kill them, now they're just going to be absorbed into the Pac-10. Those <laughs> <laughs> in the news. Hinkley, you, you all remember John Hinkley? Yeah. After 30 years, they're about to finally let him out. It's true. Yeah, he's, he wants to stalk and kill Jodie Foster. Uh, but that's considered healthy for anyone who sat through Nell. <laughs> yeah, Hinkley's about my age, you know that? Hinkley, me, Michael Jackson riding around. I'm the normal one. <laughs> Hard to believe where people my age could go wrong. I mean, we grew up with those wholesome, healthy images. You know, like those cute little cartoons depicting Charlie the Tuna. Desperately trying to commit suicide. <laughs> no warpage there. Mommy, what happens if Charlie goes to Starkist? Well, little Johnny, then all Charlie's problems go away. And he'll no longer be a burden to his family. who were a lot happier before you came along. <laughs> Thank you, Mommy. May I play with the empty bottles now? <laughs> sure, just don't trip over your father. Well, when did I officially lose you? I think uh, I think uh, Jump to the Shark uh, may may be due for a comeback. Okay. Uh, let's see what else is going on. I love Walmart. Walmart, you can buy groceries and you can buy hardware. Just for fun, I go to the counter with chicken noodle soup, rat poison. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be sorry. She'll be sorry. <laughs> you ready for our headline? Oh my god, the man with the light has left the room. <laughs> okay, I still got him. I hate Washington State! Washington State, they tried to outlaw booing at Scholastic Sports. You believe that? Come on, it's my God-given right to buy a ticket, get drunk as I want, boo all I like, maybe throw a thing or two, am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Yes. That gets you thrown in jail. Or in my case, banned for life. From the Special Olympics. <laughs> Big money on that kid. Looked like he wasn't even trying. Little tub of popcorn makes him go all ring man. And they act like there's something wrong with me. What the? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll get just as many laughs as so I stand up here and repair the mic stand. <laughs> No, actually, Josh, come bail me out and bring up uh, Glenn. Uh, my name's Johnny Cook, creepiest man in comedy. Hope to see you again soon. Johnny Cook.
You owe us a new mic stand, Johnny. God. All right, well, like you said, your next comedian uh, of the evening is, uh, he's actually another uh, member of the 955 Club. Uh, I keep saying, oh, they've been members longer than I am. I, I'm the newest member of the 955 Club, so it doesn't really count. But uh, put your hands together for Glenn Robertson. This is useless. All right. <laughs> it's almost the end of the show, so feel free during my set to start thinking about where your car is parked and how you're going to get to it after the show. That's fine. Um, I didn't know people were doing sets. I'm just fucking around up here tonight. Sorry. Um, this is like the most ironic thing in the world. I'm a stand-up comic, and my wife is a special ed teacher. She like works with kids with autism, so I am not allowed to touch that at all which is not cool but she's not here tonight so that changes a couple of rules but uh i do think what she does is very noble she works 24 hours a day very hard putting in hours trying to turn these rain boys into rain men <laughs> <laughs> that's just between us okay because she's not here tonight um I was a little bit pissed off because I had, have you ever had this where it's been like a once in a lifetime opportunity and you don't do it and then after that chance is gone you immediately realize you've probably made a horrible decision with your life? That happened to me this weekend. Uh, this past weekend, um, I don't know if you know about this, but I could have saved hundreds of dollars on furniture at Hanes. <laughs> Now, when, if ever, will I get an opportunity like that again? <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. But then I got, I was sad about that, so here's a transition. Now I'm really happy, because um, I don't have a segue. Um, I'm really, I was kind of, wanted to come out here and not even tell jokes, I just want to brag, okay? Especially to the guys. This weekend, guys, I had a 69. That's right. I had 69 this weekend. That's right. Yeah, I bought a sleep number bed. Yeah. Got home. I set it on 69 and went to sleep. That shit is overrated. That's all I'm saying. That was not what people told me it was going to be like at all. Um, I am married, but divorce jokes are easier, so I'm going to do some divorce jokes. Uh, when I was married the first time I got divorced, I was trying to get back into the dating pool, so I went to uh, Match.com, and it was really depressing because when you go on Match.com, you're supposed to put in your zip code, and then you look for matches, and you can say, look for matches within 10 miles, and uh, that's when I was told no matches found. Uh, so you have to expand it, so I expanded to like 25 miles, still no matches, expanded to 50. I had to expand so much that it switched from miles to kilometers. <laughs> so when it gets into the metric system, I think there's a problem right there, so. Then I met a girl got married again. Um, and so I, I wanted to say good job to David Ross. Like I was in the back and brought his friends, it was like his second time, he did a really good job. And it was cool that he brought his friends out. Are y'all here to see somebody in particular? Yeah. No, I thought, awesome. Enjoy it while you can, man. Seriously, because <laughs> like a month from now, you're like, hey, I'm doing another show at 9.55, come check it out. I'd be like, you doing the same jokes? <laughs> Is there anything new? That's my parents, every time I talk to them, you got any new jokes? No, I don't. I did 20 minutes and it killed. I'm sticking with that shit for life. <laughs> um, I had a sleep-in day, Saturday, you know, I mean, y'all are 20. Um, when you get a little bit older, you're like, you know what's going to be awesome this Saturday? I don't have to do anything, so I'm going to sleep. And that's fucking awesome. I was just like, I'm going to sleep in, it's going to be the best day. That's all I ask of this day is to sleep in, right? And so at 7.30 in the morning, my phone rings. I forgot to cut my phone off. So my phone rings, 7.30, I'm pissed already because it was my sleep-in day. And I pick it up, and it's my mom. So I can't be pissed because it's my mom. So I was like, yeah, hey, what's up? And she's like, hey, remember the boy you played t-ball with and his family moved to Japan? I was like, uh, yeah, Ryan Dunleavy. I was eight years old. Why, did you see him or something? She's like, no, I just couldn't think of his name. Have a good day, sweetie. And then hangs up. That was my sleep-in day. 
Did anybody see that awesome movie that came out Memorial Day weekend, Sex in the City 2? Yeah. Or, or as Sarah Jessica Parker calls it, Sex in the City. She looks like a horse. I'm sorry, she looks exactly like a fucking horse. Uh, there's a store at the mall, Bath and Body Works. What the fuck? It's a store with lotion and soap. Does that make sense to any of you guys? Anybody? It's a store of soap and lotion. They have those things at Walmart and all those other stores, but this is a store with just that. And I figured out what it is that's awesome about it for guys. If you're on a date and you're at the mall walking around, if you got a fart, hey, we need to go to bed, Bath and Body Works and check some stuff out in there because you just walk right through the store and you're good to go again. <laughs> Now, if you go in there four times during the day, they might catch on to something, that's all. All right. All right. So you know how everybody says that marriage is 50-50? Like when you get married, it's like, oh, marriage is 50-50. Everything is right down the middle, 50-50. That's not true at all. Because when you get married, there's things that you're good at and there's things that your spouse is good at. And so you would do more of the things that you're, do you're good at, right? You know what is 50-50? Divorce. Divorce is exactly 50-50, trust me. Even if you bring in, let's just throw a number out there, 78.5% of the income, it's only 50-50 when it comes time to split that shit up. That's all. And uh, I did not receive half of a master's degree in my divorce, but I paid for that shit. And I don't suddenly have half a black belt in karate either. All right? Paid for that shit too. Wow, six years. I let go of that. All right, this is going to die bad, but I have to do this just to get it out of my system. Um, one of the, everybody has things in their life. You look back and you're like, this was one of the luckiest things that ever happened to me. For me, when I was in college, the luckiest thing that happened to me was this. I went to college in uh, 90, 91, 1990, 1991. So, hey, remember when you were zero? Yeah. <laughs> remember when you weren't even conceived yet? This is going to work great. Uh, when I was in college, well, first of all, look at me. How good of a dancer do I look like? Okay, we'll just, I know what you just meant with that exhale, that's fine. I'm not a good dancer, and I hate dancing, don't want to. In college, 90, 91, that was the luckiest thing ever happened to me. The coolest music at the time, Tribe Called Quest, Black Sheep, laid back rap music. You know what I'm talking about? It was like the slow beat, and it was just chilling. And to dance to every one of those fucking songs at the club, all you had to do, know how to do was this. <laughs> that was it. Three hours at the club, like this. And if you really got into it, you could do this. There could be 500 people at a dance contest, it would be a 500 place tie for first. And all it came down to was who had the biggest coat. I think that's all that mattered in 90 was who had the biggest coat. If you had the big triple fat goose coat, and it was 98 degrees in the club, and you still had that coat on, you were the coolest person there. That went much better than I thought it would. All right. Well, hey, it's almost 4th of July, so uh, everybody has their own holiday traditions. 4th of July for the Robertson household, we have this tradition, we do it every year. The Robertson family does this every year. We, uh, we go pick up a British guy, take him to Yorktown, and kick the shit out of him. That's right. It's like, in your face, Cornwallis. Hey, thanks a lot. That's my time, y'all. Keep it going for Glenn Robertson. We have uh, one last comic for you this evening, and uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. But uh, we'll make uh, we'll get this quick so we can not run out of time. Uh, put your hands together for Mr. Jesse Jarvis. Thank you. Stand up. Uh.
Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for staying around. And, uh, by the way, uh, choose a career path that makes your mother proud. Uh, I'm doing stand-up at a pizza place. Great pizza place! But I'm not, I wasn't even supposed to go on tonight. I'm an alternate. I'm not even a real comedian. So, just keep that in mind, just saying. <laughs> um, so, I had, a, I had a guy explain to me about what women want in a man. Now, here's what I was thinking. I was thinking, Jesse, you've been dumped plenty of times by women. You should give this guy a chance. Hear what he has to say. He starts mentioning women want a guy who's tall, broad shoulders, toned body. Basically, everything he had, everything I didn't have. And he was right. You want to know how I know this? Because the guy who is telling me this just so happens to be the guy who is currently fucking my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> that was a horrible thing for me to learn at my birthday party. <laughs> that happened. You don't have to laugh. Oh uh, God, what else could I... Oh yeah, I don't really have much to say about the whole Vandersloot thing, you know, the whole Vandersloot murder thing. But I noticed on the, uh, on the TMZ websites, he's always wearing a hoodie that has pagers and, any, and everything on it. First off, no one uses pagers anymore. Grow up. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Where can I go with this now? God damn it. Uh, all right, so the other week, a Catholic priest got arrested for operating a sex dungeon in his basement. Now, all the news reporters had this reaction. Can you believe this would happen? This is crazy. Not if you think about it. Because for centuries, Catholics have been using torture devices on non-believers and enemies forever now. You go to any S&M bar or any fetish shop, it might have padding and little frills on it, but it's the same thing, the same torture devices used in the Spanish Inquisition and the Crusades. It's all there. Now, so next time you're clamping down your submissive woman, and, or next time she's clamping your balls down in a vice, and you're starting to feel a little guilty, just remember, the Pope told you to do it. <laughs> I always imagine, I wonder what it was like to go to a confession with that priest, though, you know? Like, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. You think you got problems. <laughs> you should see the stains on my wall from last Friday night. That shit is gross. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right, you know what? I, I, we got to get out of here, so I'm going to just uh, leave with this. Um, so I'm really, I'm so fascinated with Rush Limbaugh, you know? Not because of the, not, not any political thing, just for the things he says, you know? Like, like, I mentioned, you know, Republicans just woke up in a meeting one day, and they're like, oh, man, Obama's president. Who are we going to get to write this ship? Some guy just speaks up. He's like, oh, I got it. Let's get the guy who once said that the situation in Darfur is a plot by the liberals to get the black vote. Let's get the guy who once said that Michael J. Fox is faking his Parkinson's. Let's get the guy who spends his evening snorting Oxycontin off the tits of a Denny's waitress. That's our guy! <laughs> Quick plug for Denny's. <laughs> They'll let you do that there. But you gotta finish your Grand Slam first, that's the rule. You gotta finish your Grand Slam. <laughs> hey, how do you clear off your plate and snort hillbilly heroin off my tits? Right there along my tattoo of Jeff Gordon naked grabbing a bull by the horns. Right there! <laughs> anyway guys, I'm so sorry about all of this. You guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed your pizza. You were, guys, you were great tonight. Josh Sauce, grab this mic for me so I don't get further depressed. Jesse Jarvis. Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, hope you guys had a good time. We had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, we will be back here in two weeks on the 28th with our uh, regular show, Not Open Mic. Uh, so you can come back, see a couple of the same guys uh, doing full sets. Uh, it'll be awesome. Uh, it's always free. Uh, and I want you guys, if you only take one thing away from this night, I want it to be Wim Wam Wazzle. <laughs>